Hey guys, welcome to the part 10 of my video series on unit testing in Python with PyTest. In the last video, we got the brief introduction to the mock library in Python. And now, um, in this video, we are going to cover two scenarios which are a bit complex as compared to the examples we took earlier. So, in the first scenario, what we will be having is where we will be making multiple calls to a particular object that we are trying to mock. And the second scenario will be the case where we'll be having multiple dependencies in a single function and we'll be patching all of them in a single unit test. So these are two um, a bit complex scenarios that we're going to cover in this particular video. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so for tutorial 10, I already have created, um, I already have written my source code. So in the Maya package, I have sample.py where I have two functions. So let us first talk about the random underscore sum function. So this function is simply generating two random values a and b and then it is returning the sum of them, right? So again, just like every other um, function which uses random, you are not sure what the output of this function is going to be, but still you want to test this function. You want to write a unit test for it, right? So how to do that? So let us just try to um, understand this thing a bit first. Um, let us consider a case where you have a mock object where you want to return the value a bit different every time you run it. So let us consider that particular case. Okay. So I'm just going to um, use the Python notebook here. So let me just import from unit test import mock. Okay. So let me create a mock m equal to mock, let's say, um, sorry, it should be mock dot mock. So now um, I can say that m dot return value is equal to three, right? So whenever I call m, I get three. But what if I have certain scenario where I want to return a different value um, every time? Let's say I want to call m three times and each time it should be um, first time it should be one then two and then three and so on so how to do that particular kind of configuration of my mock so actually for that what you have to do is that you have to use something called side effect so side effect is the property that you have to set in which you have to provide the list in which um, each element refers to the output of your mock objects call and that's it so let me just put it like m dot side effect equal to one to three so let me call m one time one two three and now it is stop iteration because you have specified that you are returning only these three values one by one so after that it will start throwing error which is stop iteration so this is how m dot side effect works and one more interesting thing that you can do in side effect is that you can also specify any exception which you want to be thrown by your mock so let me just put a and put an exception let's say zero division error so let me just put it like this. So now let me call my mock one, two, three, and zero division error. And again, run it, stop iteration, right? So in this way, you can control um, the output of your mock object and side effect helps you to define exceptions as well. Um, and that's the benefit of them. So yeah, so let me just confirm that whether return value will allow me to throw any exception or not. So let me put it like this. So let me just create the mock again and set the return value and call it. So no, it is not throwing the error. So this is the limitation with return value that it can't throw any exception if you want it to. So you will have to side effect for that only. And also another interesting thing that you have for side effect is that you can also specify any particular function which should be called whenever a side effect is called. So for that, you have to do def, um, let me call it my side effect. So now I can return. So what do I return here? Um, so any parameters that you will be providing while calling your function, they will be provided to your side effect also. So let us call it num. So I will be returning num plus one every time. Okay, so 
my side effect now is going to be my side effect and so let me just run everything again so now let me pass m1 i'll get 2 m6 i'll get 7 and so on so in this way you can also define some kind of relations between the arguments that you are passing to a particular mock object and the output that you are trying to generate while it is getting called so in this way you do it so now coming back to our um, case of random integers um, we have a and b right so what i would like to do here is that let's say i would like to generate a different value for a and b so i can simply do that by using a side effect right so let me just do it right now so let me just create the test package and inside that let me create the python file which is test underscore sample and here let me just write test so it is random sum so now i have to write the unit test for testing that so first of all what do i want to patch i want to patch a particular function which is random dot randint so in its local scope what is the path to this particular function uh, to this particular object it is tut tut10 dot my app dot sample dot random dot randint and i'll be calling it mock randint so in this way i've configured the um mock for this particular um, function object random dot random and whenever that will be called i am going to now specify what should be returned so mock underscore random dot return value so i'm not going to use return value now so i'm going to use side effect so side effect is equal to um, 1 comma 3 comma 4 let's say so once uh, so the value of a will of course now will be 3 and value of b will be 4 so let me just assert that random sum when it is called it returns 7 so that's it so let me just try to run it and see if we are doing it correctly and yeah we are doing it correctly this is how you do it this is how you can use the side effect and it's working fine for some other complex cases uh, you of course might need to do it like this by specifying a function and all you need to uh, remember is that um, any argument that will, will be that will be passed to your mock object they'll be passed to this function as well so that is another thing that you need to know about side effect and third thing that you need to know about side effect is that you can also throw exceptions through it okay so this is it and one more thing uh, that i would like to assert is that some calls were actually made to my mock up uh, by my mock or uh, some calls were actually made by my mock object right so how to do that so for that you what you need to do is let me just run it again so let me run m1 so i get 2 and run, let me run m2 i get 3 okay so n dot so call arguments you can get call args list so look at that it is returning me the calls which have been made to this function so far and what were the values so let me just do it like this num1 num2 and let me just return num1 plus num2 and let me just do it like m1 comma 3 or 1 comma 4 and then 1 comma 5 so my call arg list will look something like this call 1 4 call 1 5 so basically call arg list stores the information about all the calls which are made and what arguments were passed to them so how do we assert um, the calls which have been made so for that you can do m dot assert um, has calls in which you have to pass a list containing those calls so you just need to import the call object so from unit test import mock and it should be mock.call so let me just write it directly mock.call and mock.call 1 comma 4 and mock.call 1 comma 5 and yes it is working if i try 1 6 it's error assertion error so yeah so this is how you can uh, mock that whether my mock object was called with these particular arguments only 
and for that you have to use the call um, the call object so doing the same thing in my unit test I can do it like this mock randint dot assert has so it was assert has calls and I have to provide two calls here so if this is calls equal to a list call 3 comma call 4 and let me just import call directly so in this way so now let me just try to run it um, so my test seems to be failing let us try to see the reason so there is an assertion error here and the assertion error is actually expected was call 3 and call 4 but actually is call 1 comma 10 oh yes right you're right uh, <laughs> we did some big mistake here so of course we are always calling call 110 and call 110 always so let me just make it call 110 17 so actually this is the mock function that i am uh, this is the object that i'm trying to mock so these are the arguments right so yeah call 1 comma 10 so in this way i'm also able to verify whether um, i'm passing correct limits or not right so yeah running it again and it's passing okay so yeah so in this way uh, we are able to assert that whether correct arguments are getting passed to my mock object or not so we will end uh, this thing right here this first scenario and let us quickly move to the second scenario which is this particular function called silly because it is actually silly which we will see why it is silly so what we are doing first of all is we are generating a timestamp by calling time dot time then we are generating a random number between 1 to 6 and then we are making a call to this particular url which is httpbin.org slash get with these parameters and then we are returning um, the args key from the json response which is made to this particular url so let me just show you how this particular url works what is happening here so httpbin.org.get what it does is that it um, any parameters that you pass any url parameters that you pass they are actually uh, returned in the args key of the response so since i'm saying time equal to one two three i'm getting time equal to one two three if i try to do an num equal to one two three or four then i will get that as well so yeah so i'm just returning this dictionary as the output and my main goal is going to be to verify whether these values are correct or not right and in order to do that i will have to do i will have to mock time dot time as well as random dot randint again as you can see because they are the part of parameters so first mock for this second mock for random and third mock for request library so i have to mock three different dependencies in a single unit test and that is a challenge so how to do that so let me just call it def test silly and now actually all i have to do is that i have to just specify the um, all the patch decorators one by one so let me just start with mock dot patch let me start with random int first and then um, and then random dot randint then it is time dot time as we can see we have got time dot time and then finally we have got request dot get so these are the three things that we have to uh, patch now the question is what should be the order of the arguments um, that we are going to get as the mock objects so for that you actually have to start from the uh, inner one so first is request.get so that will be the first parameter so it is mock requests get then the second parameter will be the one above it so it is mock time and then the third one will be mock rand int so in this way you actually have to do this okay so now it is quite simple so actually this was the only complex thing here so all that we need to do is uh, specify a few things mock request get is equal to mock dot mock so now uh, what should be the output of request dot get function it should be a mock response which should have a status code and a json method so let me just do it in the compact way which is like this status code 200 and json functions return value is equal to now i have to specify the return value so let me just 
specify those things so mock time dot return value is equal to let's say one two three so let me just define these all these things as variables so let me call it test params so test parameters is equal to um, timestamp is equal to one two three and number is equal to let's say five so the mock times return value should be test params timestamp and mock randint's return value should be equal to 5 and finally here the json dot return value in this particular case should it should actually be equal to test params because that is what is getting passed um, actually not um, so json dot return value should be it should have a dictionary as we can see here it should have a dictionary where the args is the name of the key and then the value should be my test params so args and then its value should be test params so that's it um, we have specified our mock response object also so now everything is done so all i need to do is call silly and basically assert that silly returns me test params that's it and also mock request get dot return value is what i have to do here so just remember that so yeah so in this way we have defined our unit test and it seems um, okay so let me just run it to test if we have done everything correctly and yes we have done everything correctly so in this way uh, we have been able to write a unit test where we are map patching um, multiple um, dependencies so yeah so this was all about it um, if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching